It is one of the most well-known and most quoted chapters in the Bible. Brides and grooms frequently have it read in their weddings. It represents Paul at his very best, both theologically and rhetorically. I'm talking, of course, about 1 Corinthians 13, that great chapter on love. After all, that's the focus of this fourth week of Advent, after we lit the fourth candle, the candle of love on the Advent wreath. Hello, I'm Stuart Paskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Wednesday, December 21st, 2022. Let me start today by reading the passage. Paul says, If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. So far this week, we've seen how important love is supposed to be within the Christian community. Both the letter of 1 John and the Gospel of John lift it up as an indispensable element within the community of faith. But it takes someone like Paul to wrestle with the intersection between the ideal and the real. And the reality is that from the very beginning, Christians have struggled to exhibit love for one another within the church. Paul's letters to all of the churches, but especially the church in Corinth, reveal just how fractious churches could and can be. Read them through in one or two sittings and you will be struck by the fact that Paul was doing his dead level best to get a fractured congregation to stay together. Everyone had his or her own ideas about the faith and there were even competing evangelists preaching versions of the gospel that were conflicting and in some instances even irreconcilable. The church in Corinth in particular had broken into parties each one loyal to a different evangelist and a different version of the gospel. The predictable result was that members of the church in Corinth were hopelessly divided. Love one another? Not hardly. All of which makes this chapter in 1 Corinthians all the more remarkable and poignant. You think your understanding of the gospel is superior? Great, but if you cannot love your fellow disciples, it means nothing. You think you have higher spiritual gifts than your neighbors? Yeah, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But if you can't love your fellow believers, all the spiritual gifts in the world amount to nothing. You think your sacrificial generosity is a shining example to your fellow believers? Excellent, and thank you, by the way, for your tithes and offerings. They certainly do help. But if you cannot bring yourself to love your fellow believers, all your generosity add up to exactly zero. In short, there are lots of things that discipleship involves, but one thing stands out as essential, love. 
even faith and hope take a back seat to love. But so far we've only learned that love is supremely important. It still doesn't tell us what Paul thinks love is. Now, I don't want to shortchange the topic, so rather than try to dig into it now, let's talk about it tomorrow. For now, it's enough to know that love is the sine qua non of the faith, the without which not, the thing without which the church ceases to be truly the church. Tomorrow, then, what Paul thinks love actually is. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.